this library is a critically important part of what we are trying to do here in South Africa and all of you who come here and participate in the programs are part of the effort so that we can listen and learn from each other as, as uh, Bruce has said. President Obama and Secretary Clinton have made a center part, a center plank of our foreign policy, reaching out to people in different countries and different parts of the world, of connecting citizens in the United States with all of you. And so this is part of that program. And I was particularly interested to come today and sit here and watch one of the training sessions on how to use social media uh, to, con to sort of engage with each other, to sort of help raise your voices. It's such an important part of today's world. Um, and so I'm very much looking forward to the training session, watching how it goes. And again, we want to be sure that we're providing you with programs that are useful to you. So we hope to hear back from you um, as these programs go forward. If there are things we're doing that you like, that you'd like us to do more of, we'd like to know that. If there are things we're doing that you don't like, we want to hear that. And if there are things, and I'd also like to hear some of your ideas on how we can uh, build these bridges together. So thank you very much for being here, and I look forward to spending a little bit of time with you this afternoon. Thank you. U.S. Embassy Public Affairs Department do is to train young leaders to take their right place in society. And one of the two people whom the U.S. government has helped train through the Global Media Girls Program is, are the two distinguished ladies I'm, sp uh, I'm going to be speaking with today. Um, we have Anna Seko and Manto Shabalala, and we want to welcome you to Rosa Parks today. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with you, Anna. What is the Global Girls Media Program all about? Okay, Global Girl Media is a program that initiated by the American non-governmental organization during the FIFA 2010 World Cup. Uh, it is meant to train young girls about journalism, uh, how to have professional skills on video and camera, stand-ups and writing. How about you, Manto? Um, how has this program helped you? Well, it kept me out of the streets. Well, during the World Cup, which was in June and July, uh, you know, people were outside going partying and doing things like that. It helped me with technical skills. So, yeah, it helped me a lot. Uh, Manto, we were speaking earlier, um, um, yesterday, I, I believe it was, and you told me the way this program gave you things to do, whereas you'd have been wasting time doing something else. Do you want to just speak about that a bit? Well, I have friends, some of my friends are doing drugs, they go with sugar daddies, so it helped me a lot with that. I, I couldn't have any sugar daddy, I didn't do any drugs, and then um, I, all I did was write, uh, because I love writing. When I was at home, I write anything that we did with Global Girl Media, so it helped me a lot during those things, yeah. It's great to know that the training you've received has impacted not only your professional life, but your personal life as well, Manto. But um, journalism has always been in your blood. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure, I do. Well, I come from a background where I had a, an abusive father, and he used to like, beat us all the time, and I couldn't even talk to my mother about anything that I wanted to express myself with. So the only way I could express myself and make my voice to be heard was to write something in the book. So all I did was write. So that's when I fell in love with journalism. Well, I fell in love with print journalism. That's what I loved. I loved writing a lot, poetry and everything. I love writing. But for you, Anna, it's a totally different story, isn't it? Not at all. I never loved being a journalist. Yeah. But, you know, it's because of the vendetta that we get from our source of media. I won't mention the newspapers, but they are more tabloidic, and you get most of the time that they reveal negative stuff about our, our communities, other than positive things that will build us. So definitely, I didn't like journalism. So what made you change your mind then, Anna? Hmm. There's this woman from America. Um, her name is Amy Williams. She came in South Africa during 2009, and she showcased how to be a professional journalist, and wow. I fell in love with it. Fantastic. Great to know that. You c feel free to give a round of applause. <clears throat> I believe this is Anne Williams, the founder of Global Girls Media, whom you met here at Rosa Parks Library. Is that correct? Yes, Amy Williams. Manto, you joined the Global Girls Program in a similar way also. 
Um, what have some of your most memorable moments been during the training program? Well, it was a game with uh, Brazil versus Chile. We went there to watch that game at Elise Park. Uh, it was the experience of a lifetime. We had to like write about the story, interview the people there, so I was really thrilled about everything. Anna, you were there for that game too? Of course, <laughs> I was there. You know, the most memorable uh, moment would be when we stepped into the stadium and everybody was so surprised that young girls like us could actually become professional journalists. Well, that's fantastic. You know, the, the World Cup was a moment in South Africa that none of us will ever be able to forget. And I'm happy that, you know, the U.S. government gave you an opportunity to be able to be trained and get an experience that you never would have gotten an experience before. Manto, what other messages through this training have you heard your community speaking about? Well, HIV and AIDS. That would be HIV and AIDS because people are scared uh, to go and get tested. So, and people in our community are trying to hide that. But then the message that we want to get out there is the message of HIV and AIDS, that we need to get tested and we need to make sure that we protect ourselves from this uh, disease. Um, it's great to know um, that you know people are, are being bolder by the day from your community about speaking about the status of of of, uh, of their HIV status because we know that the more they reveal their HIV status, then it makes you know it makes uh, this this it reduces the the tragedy of HIV AIDS in your community. Thank you and so much, Anna and Manto, for your time. Uh, these are the leaders of tomorrow, uh, ne, um, and we are very happy to be with you. Um, you, you guys have been a great audience. Um, if I was Oprah, I'd be very happy. <laughs> so please give yourselves a round of applause. I, I just want to thank our Undersecretary Judith McKill for taking the time to speak to this audience. You can see the thirst and the hunger that they have to know more, to experience more. And we know that what you have heard, you will take to the people that are necessary to hear. So your words have not, in have not been in vain. They have fallen into the right ears.